Hey guys, my name is Francisco Hernandez and today I'm going to be reviewing your images. I asked in my lighting group on Facebook if you guys wanted me to critique your photos with off camera flash and you guys definitely expressed interest in that. A lot of you guys commented and I was able to choose four images to go over today in today's video. If you guys want to see this as a weekly thing, definitely like this video right now and let me know at the end of the video which photo was your favorite that I critiqued and that'll help push it into the algorithm and allow me to keep making this series. I just want to say before I start that photography is definitely subjective. So everything that I'm going to be saying is purely my opinion. There's no right or wrong answer. And if you guys have differing opinions, I welcome you so much to let me know what your opinion is in the comment section below, because I like the feedback. I like to see different sides to opinions. So with that said, again, everything is just my opinion. I'm trying my best to help you guys with this critique. Um, so let's continue with this video. Before I continue, I do want to let you guys know that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for people who love to learn and explore their creativity while learning new skills. You can invest in yourself and your personal growth with Skillshare. If you have a specific skill that you're trying to learn, Skillshare is the perfect place to start. They have classes on so many things, not just photography and off camera flash, but graphic design, marketing, productivity, and so much more. I highly recommend you guys go check out Skillshare for yourself. There's so many different benefits to joining Skillshare, including the fact that it's ad free, so you can always stay focused and in the zone while exploring new skills. They always launch new premium classes every single week, so there's always something new to discover. And their entire catalog of classes offers subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. One class that I recently looked into is called YouTube Success Script Shoot and Edit with MKBHD. I'm a huge fan of his channel, so I wanted to see if there's anything I could learn from his class and implement into my own videos. One thing that he talked about was creating a hook, something really engaging in the first 10 seconds of your videos. And I honestly don't do that, so I think it'd be fun and interesting to start doing that in my own videos. If you guys are interested in trying Skillshare out, be sure to use my link in the description area below or use my promo code Francisco Joel Hernandez because the first thousand of you to use my link or use my promo code will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Supporting the people that support my channel allows me to keep making free content for you guys, so definitely check out Skillshare. Okay, so this is the first photo that I'm going to be going over today, which is by Sandra Clark. And for all the photos that I'm going to be critiquing today, I created my own small list of different categories to just organize my thoughts. I'm calling that little list my A, B, C, D, E's, and you guys will see in a quick second what those letters stand for. Letter A stands for ambient level because when it comes to taking portraits outside with off camera flash, the amount of ambient light that you let into your picture, how you expose the ambient light to be darker or not, is always gonna be something that really impacts how the flash looks like. And it's always a difficult decision because depending on how you expose the ambient light, you can have good things and bad things going on in your photo. Like for this photo example, it's pretty much a perfect example of describing what I'm talking about because there's a lot of shadow detail going on in about one fourth of this image and the rest of it has very bright detail. If you were to go ahead and just expose for one or the other, then you would lose the other. What I mean by that is because there's a lot of shadow detail there, if you were to just expose and make that shadow detail very bright, then everything else would be too bright. And in the opposite direction, if you were to go ahead and expose more for that sky and bring down the ambient light, which would bring down the exposure of the entire shot, then all that detail in the shadow would be lost. It's for that reason that I wanna give props to Sandra for choosing this amount of ambient light because you get both detail in the shadows and in the highlights, which is always gonna be a good thing. I do know that there are some people out there that will say, well, it's very bright behind her head. Why didn't she expose the ambient light to be a little bit darker? But like I said before, if she were to go ahead and just lower the exposure of that sky detail behind her head, you're not just adjusting the exposure of that area, but the entire image and that would make the details in the shadow too dark. So again, I think that she did great with her choice. Letter B stands for blend of off camera flash with ambient. And like I said before, she did add a lot of ambient light to this photo. And I think that helped with masking how obvious the flash would have looked if she chose a lower level of ambient. A few years ago, I made a video comparing different size octoboxes. And I did provide a tip in that video that if you add a lot of ambient light into your photo, that the flash won't look so apparent. And that's pretty much what's going on here. There's so much ambient that it's masking how obvious and flashy the flash, the off camera flash looks. Letter C stands for composition and pose. When it comes to the composition, that's something that's very, very subjective. And I think 
For this image, what a big challenge is, is choosing how to orient the subject. I think for myself, I would have chosen this exact same composition because I do know there's people out there that would say, well, that building needs to be perfectly you know, straight. But if you did that, if you were to go ahead and correct that building, there'd be so much other things going wrong with this photo, specifically with how the subject is positioned. Because of how the subject is aligned in this image, if you were to correct that building, then it would make the subject look a little bit like she's leaning too much forward. So this is something that's very, very complicated. But again, I think the composition as is, you know, how it's oriented at least, is great. There is not a lot of different distracting elements around her. The building is cutting into her head just slightly, but I honestly think that's something that's not really big of an issue, especially in this photo. I think where she placed the subject was a good choice because the sunlight is probably behind her head. And if she were to be somewhere else, then all that sunlight would be coming into the lens, creating less contrast and would probably make it difficult to focus. So I think the composition is really great. The level, the height that she's at is super, super good in my opinion, because I think if she went higher, then you would get more of that floor detail. And I think it's good at the level that it's at right now. And if you would get lower, then I think she would be too much looking up at the subject. So the level and the composition and the crop and the orientation is all really good in my opinion. As for the pose, I also think that the pose is really nice. And I'm not trying to say that everything looks great in here. So I'll just do my best to nitpick on this aspect. I think if she were to bend her right leg, that would have helped see a little bit of what the shoes that she chose were. Because I do know that sometimes with senior portraits, the shoes can be a big choice. And also angles also help improve the pose as well. I never really see angles as a bad thing. So adding some angles is always gonna be good. Also, I think if we were to see her left hand a little bit, then that would kind of reduce the one arm look, which isn't really too bad for this photo. But again, just a little bit of the left arm showing would really help. Letter D stands for distractions. And I'm very hypercritical with my own photos, but I, do, I end up removing things that people won't normally see. So I'm gonna do my best to keep it minimal for this photo. The only real distraction I really see in this image is that guy in the blue shirt in the back next to that car. He's like an eyesore. So I would definitely remove him, maybe reduce the lines that are on that building and the little thing in the street and the highlights on that car. And I think aside from that, the image would be perfectly fine. The last thing I would say is that hair is going a bit over her cheek and I do know Photoshop very well. So I know it's possible to reduce that look of the hair on her cheek. So that little bit of reduction of that hair on her cheek would really help. Letter E stands for everything else. And it's just a random category that I made to talk about anything that I think deserves extra props. But for this picture, I think the choice of material for the top and the color worked really well. I think the top is not too reflective, so it's not too shiny. And I think the color also works really well with this environment. So the styling was really nice. I think that's pretty much it. So I just wanna give last props to Sandra for this picture. Really good job. Okay, so this is the second image that I'm gonna be going over today which is by Uziel Giron Photo. And it's an awesome studio portrait. And I wanted to review this image because I don't do much studio portraits myself. So I wanted to give my non-studio portrait photographer kind of perspective. For studio portraits, letters A and B don't really apply because there's no ambient level to judge. So I'll just skip right into composition and pose. The composition is just pretty much how the subject is aligned in the image and the crop. And I think both of those work really well here. So when it comes to the pose, I was actually really interested in this pose when I saw this image because it's very interesting and in that it seems like different things are going on. She could be kind of curious about something or being a little bit flirtatious. And I think not knowing exactly what that is, is very interesting because it could be interpreted as both in my opinion. Specifically when it comes to the fingers being kind of tucked in like this, I thought that was very interesting because I don't think I've seen that pose. I usually see nails as weird as that might sound, I usually see nails in pictures with girls because you might want them to show a little bit or they're kind of just turned in a way that you kind of still see them and you don't really see them on the top hand at least. And I think even if the nails were showing, that would actually work against the image because then you would have something distracting from her facial expression. Sometimes the nail color can be a bit distracting. So thankfully it's not showing up here, but also the nails aren't really distracting at all. You can see on the bottom hand, that they're kind of a neutral color. So that's good. When it comes to the pose on the legs, usually I'll have the legs kind of crossed a little bit to create a little bit of an angle. 
kind of, I don't know how to do it, but legs crossed a little bit just to create a little bit of a V shape on the bottom of the leg. But I do like how it is posed here. So that's also a good thing. Don't really have anything negative to say about the pose. So I'll skip to the next category. Actually, I just remembered two things I did want to talk about, and that's the eye direction, which I would consider the pose as well, and the expression on the face, which again, I think kind of combines with the pose. I do really like the expression because sometimes expressions can really ruin a photo. You can have perfect lighting, location, outfit, styling, everything, but then the expression could just look really, really bad or weird, and it would just ruin the shot. So I think I want to give props to the expression, but also talk about the hands and something else. That hand on the hip, I think if it were just tucked a little bit back behind her, that would help slim that arm a little bit because right now what it's doing, because the hand or the arm is too close to the body, it kind of just creates mentally that an image of the girl being bigger than she is. And I always try to separate the arm from the body to kind of reduce that effect. So I think that would have helped not only in reducing how big she looks or how bigger she looks but also would allow some of that orange light to kind of hit the side of her body and that would have created a little bit more of a carving look a carved look in terms of rim light being on the side of her body also with the eye i think there's a little bit too much white and having her look a little bit towards the camera would reduce it and help but again this is completely theoretical maybe he did that the photographer did that and it didn't look as nice and this was probably the best look so again, these are all just theoretical suggestions to try and improve the photo, but I really do like how it looks like right now. As for distractions, I don't think that there's much anything to distract from this image aside from maybe the hair. I think that parting of the hair up there would probably just reduce that or eliminate it because it's just a little bit of blue right there on the top of the head. For letter E, everything else, I did want to mention that it is a bit bright here in the chest area and that can kind of create a little bit of a battle between the tension between the face and the chest so it really just honestly depends on what you're really going for if it was more important to get the chest more of attention then that's also fine but i just wanted to point that out because sometimes i've experienced that with white shirts in my photos when i use off-camera flash the white on the shirt might be too bright and i have to usually reduce that so I'm not sure if that was the case here, but I just did want to bring that up just in case it wasn't a desired result. I also wanted to mention the retouching on the left leg, camera left leg, because it is a little bit off in terms of like there's inconsistencies in the skin on one leg, but the other, it seems pretty smooth throughout. So I think just matching the smoothest level on both legs would really improve the shot. And I think also the hair on the face is actually working against the image. I think if you were to go ahead and just reduce it somehow, or if there's another image that's very, very similar with the hair pulled back a little bit, then you can maybe face swap so that it's just less hair in the face. Again, it's completely subjective. I'm kind of just battling my own opinions myself because I think the fact that the hair is covered around the eye allows you to focus more on the rest of the face. So, but I think in that case, I'd probably want the hair to completely cover that eye, but I feel like it's just, kind of doing the job because I can still see the eye. I also wanted to point out the nice texture in the smoke or added clouds. I don't know exactly what it is. It could be smoke, but I do like the texture, whatever that is behind her and the color choice. I'm pretty sure it falls within the color theory and the colors that match each other. Um, I forgot what it's called. Complementary colors is what I was thinking of. And I think the colors work well. And again, I just really like the texture of that background. It's I don't know how to describe it as crunchy, but it has a nice texture to it. So that's also interesting. And again, I just want to give props to Uziel for this shot. Again, I don't do studio portraits, so I'm a big fan of it when I, I see it. This photo on the screen is the third image and it's by Cyrus Teague. It's an awesome senior portrait. I do really like this image and I think it's very interesting. That's why I wanted to critique it. For the ambient level, I want to say that it was a great choice because like I said before, sometimes it can be very difficult in terms of having a lot of bright area and a lot of dark area. And one thing that you can do to reduce this difficulty is adding a lot more of one or the other. So in this case, there's a lot of area on the ground, which isn't very bright. 
so it's easier to now determine what you want the exposure to look like. And the level of ambient light hitting the ground is really nice. There's a lot of nice colors and nice saturation. So it's a good job in terms of exposing for the ambient light. I would probably guess that this was towards gold hour or golden hour because even the sunlight that's hitting her hair is a good exposure and there's nothing that's very bright going on in this image. Maybe above the hand there on top of the soccer ball a little bit, but that's pretty much it. When you get towards the late afternoon and the bright sunlight becomes less bright, it becomes easier to get both of the details in the shadows and in the highlights, which is why I think it's towards golden hour in this image. Because of the amount of ambient light in this image, the flash just kind of just blends in nicely. And you can actually see that even the direction of the light was really nice. It goes a little bit into the cheek there. And again, the lighting is really nice in this image. So props on the ambient light and how well it blends with the off-camera flash. When it comes to the composition, that was the thing that probably really interested me the most because it's shooting through a net and it's, you can still see a lot of the detail it's not blurred by the net. You can still see all the detail in the skin and everything else that's really important. So it was very interesting. I wanna say that because the eyes are really important when it comes to portraits, that because the net is covering a little bit of the face, it's not too bad or anything. It's actually really interesting. Composition, I would give an A plus for this picture because it's so interesting shooting through the net with such a long lens. I wanna say at least 105 millimeters and a very wide aperture 1.4. But again, I don't really know much about the image aside from what I'm seeing. So your guess is as good as my guess, but I definitely wanna say this is a good long lens with a wide aperture. The only thing I would probably change about this image is probably shifting a little bit higher. I'm not sure if I would need to take a step back or if by shifting the net would be more in the eyes. So again, completely subjective and theoretical change. But I think because I don't want to see so much of the shirt underneath, I do want to have a little bit more headspace. Because this is a senior portrait, you always want to give a little bit of space around the subject in case they want to print in different ways. So I think just a little bit of a shift would help. When it comes to distractions, I don't really see anything that I would change here except for one or two things. There's one small hair on camera left that I would probably either reduce or eliminate using post-production because I feel like that little bit of net is kind of just blending in the hair from the background and then you kind of see the hair again. So it's like hair is kind of just away from the body and I would probably just reduce it to kind of just eliminate it completely. And I think aside from that, just maybe a little bit of the wrinkles on the shirt and that's pretty much it. Actually, there's one big thing I saw just now, which is the logo on the soccer ball. I'm not sure how the soccer ball looks like completely all around it, but I would definitely want to not have the barcode and that logo next to the barcode up front and center, if that makes sense. I'll probably rotate it so that there's not anything too distracting, maybe even just blank area, or you can use post-production to just remove it. But aside from that, I don't really see much else to correct or fix. I think I would only say when it comes to the pose, actually I forgot to mention this in the pose section, I probably would have the ball a little bit lower to completely remove that letter showing or move it in a different way to see more of the, the number because I think right now it's kind of just peaking just a tiny bit and I would probably want it to just be removed completely or showing up more, not halfway, which is how it feels like it is right now. And aside from that, everything looks great. So I'm just gonna move on to the next image. This last image on the screen is by Jason Gamino. I found it very, very interesting. Again, because this is a studio portrait, letters A and B in my little list don't really apply, so I'll just skip to C. The composition and pose are both really great. Again, with composition in terms of studio portraits, you just have to focus on how the subject looks like within the frame and how cropped it is, and both work really well. I do really, really like the fact that you can't see her eyes. You can only see from like a little bit above the lips. And I also really like how that hand is pulling down the hat. It adds more to this, to the mystery aspect of this image, which I think is a big kind of theme because so many different parts of this image are hidden intentionally. And I think it really adds to that mystery element. This is a very interesting picture. And I think honestly, it's hard to critique it because so many different things are things that I wouldn't even think about. When it comes to that pattern on her, it's really, I wanna give props to that because I know how hard it is to get lighting not leaking and spilling into different areas. And I know that it probably was a challenge to get that pattern not showing up on the hat, or at least post-production was done to remove that look of the light going 
onto the hat. There's so much shadow detail that I wouldn't say is a bad thing because it kind of does its job in hiding certain things that don't want to be seen. So when it comes to composition, which I'm adding shadow detail into that for some reason, but I feel like it's just, it does a great job of hiding different things that I think the photographer didn't want to be too noticeable. And then I think that that chest area all the way to the chin area and the belly area is just like a very interesting pattern to work with to kind of just match all those different sections and kind of just unify them really nicely. So again, I'm not intentionally trying to give nothing but positive notes about this image. So sorry for that, but it's just an awesome, interesting image. I think the only thing that I would say needs to be corrected is probably the hot spots that I'm seeing on the side of the arm and the bright side of the, the boob. <laughs> But aside from that, I don't really see anything that needs to be adjusted or fixed in this picture. I am a big fan of it. If I were to be extra hypercritical, maybe that part of the hat that seems to have a little bit of a dent. Honestly, I think that's pretty much it. I actually found one last thing that, again, you guys let me know if you agree with this or not, but I feel like everything on the subject is very, very smooth, but then you see a lot of the veins that are kind of just distracting, I wanna say, from the rest of the image because everything looks so smooth, but then that hand looks just, I don't know if it, I wanna say this is correct or not to say this, but it feels older than the rest of the image, the, the person. So I feel like it kinda of just distracts from everything else that's going on. Maybe you could reduce the look of the veins with dodge and burn. Again, it's just things that I'm thinking about to be very hypercritical and only to help you guys out if I can. But again, this is completely subjective. So again, props to the photographer. That's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, be sure to give it a like, share it with your friends and let me know your thoughts below. I'll see you guys in the very next video. If you guys did enjoy this series, let me know and I'll make this a weekly thing. But for now, take care and I'll see you in the next video.